Hey guys, Huz here, bringing you another video, this time playing Ziggs, uh, the AP Mage. Now you'll notice a couple of differences in this game, one being the mic. Uh, I have got myself a new mic, I was aware that there was a kind of static problem in the old one with a kind of rumbly noise, and I was unhappy, so I have got myself a blue snowball, uh, but this will take a few videos to absolutely perfect to get the audio levels right. This will obviously be the first video that I'm using this in, and the thing that's different with having a standalone mic to a headset mic, you really need to get the positioning right, so I'll be moving it around my desk and all the area throughout the next couple of videos, trying to find uh, really where I want it. But anyway, other than uh, you know that mic stuff, we're playing Ziggs this game, one of my favourite AP mages, and finally he has become viable. We're saying that he's always been viable, but he's actually quite strong now. Now a lot of people have asked, you know, why has Ziggs all of a sudden come popular? Why why is that? Basically over the past few patches, Ziggs has received updates and buffs here and there, uh, and people really haven't noticed that much. Uh, Ziggs has become fairly strong, it has to be said. He's a great tower pusher. He's great pushing towers with Lich Bane and his uh, when he gets Sheen or and his passive, sorry. Um, and he's also good at poking, he's good at disruption, and in this game I'm playing against a Katarina. Uh, Ziggs is actually very good against Katarina, seeing that uh, as soon as she jumps onto him, he can try and use W, and two things that happen when he uses W on Katarina. One, it stops her and moves her a little bit away from him, and the second thing, if you position it right, you actually jump away from Katarina, getting out of the fight completely. It's a great, great way to kind of counter Katarina in that type of sense. So we've got an Amumu this game, and he has actually opted to start blue. He, I think he was a bit scared that they may have tried to steal his in a way, because, you know, Amumu without blue is not a very good Amumu. Uh, very hard early game to get right. So anyway, just did a little bit of a leash there. Java and top lane is going to help him a little bit, and then I've returned to mid lane to start the mid lane laning phase. Um, so to play this lane, I would say play fairly aggressive early. Try to get auto attacks here and there. You'll see me every now and then and auto attacking. Now, runes and masteries that I currently run on Ziggs, uh, I believe in this game I would have run something along the lines of Magic Pen Reds, Health Per Level Yellows, MR Blues, and AP Quints. It's a great good start early with scaling health that will help you against a AP Assassin Mage, much like a Katarina. Runes-wise, uh, or masteries rather, it's 21-9-0 with going into some defense just to help me survive, as mana on Ziggs is not a massive problem if you know how to manage it. Um, you know, using your auto attacks more than your abilities, especially in the early game, is the way forward and is the best thing to do because Ziggs, unlike other champions, has great auto attack animation and a great auto attack passive. Um, and then the going into the offense is basically I get two points in AD uh, just to help me get them, you know, as I am auto attacking a lot and I am last hitting as much as I can uh, with my auto attack, not spells. That two extra AD from the masteries will help you quite a bit. Anyway, Sejuani is looking for a gank on me, so this isn't looking great. I've got my mines down, and, and about now, you see me ignite Katarina. She also flashes, and bam, I get first blood. So that is kind of where a dive goes wrong. The mines of Ziggs is great for slowing opponents, especially if they're going under tower. Um, and there are two things they kind of did wrong there. Um, Sejuani was not tanking turret. Uh, Katarina was, which obviously you'd probably want the Sejuani to tank at least one or two tower hits uh, because she is slightly tankier, but Katarina tanked it all. I ignite the, ignited the Katarina and she did go down. So that was quite a nice first blood for myself. Not a total outplay at all. That was kind of their mistake that gave me the first blood, but still always nice to kind of have that in your back pocket. Going to base early. Now, a lot of people don't realize basing as soon as you get first blood, you know, push the wave, get it to into the middle of the, the lane, much like I have. So, as you can see, it's not on my turret, it's in the middle of the wave. It's actually a really good thing to do because you're not missing out on anything. And anyway, I'm going to just quickly speed up the video just to get us into lane quicker. Uh, but basing as soon as you get first blood is always a good thing to do simply because you need to use your gold advantage. A lot of people carry thousands of gold in their pockets and then wonder how did they die. You need to spend the gold. The gold makes you stronger. Yes, levels do as well, but predominantly, you know, you want to spend that gold. Anyway, you can see that I'm really trying to harass this Katarina as much as I can. I was a fail bouncing bomb there, as I thought she may have stayed on me a little bit longer. Um, but still, you know, trying to get that harassing. I've got an extra Dorian's ring early. Get a bouncing bomb on her. Get the passive auto attack on her. Uh, so this is going fairly well now. She's come back in range for a couple more auto attacks. So throw up the mines to get even more damage onto her. And unfortunately, I don't pick up the kill. But there she's out of lane again. Always a great thing to do is get your opponent out of lane as soon as they've really come back into lane. Um, this is what Ziggs is kind of a master of. 
Uh, Ziggs can do this against most melee champions. Ziggs is actually pretty good against Fizz. He's actually one of the AP mages I play against Ziggs. Um, as well as Ziggs is again, you know, he's just generally a good champion. He's good against Morgana. He's good against Ari. Well, Ari is actually quite a hard lane, but he still can beat an Ari. Just use your auto attacks to your advantage. Now, in this game, I briefly will go over our team comp. This is a solo queue diamond game. I'm actually duo queuing with Gals in this game, who I think is diamond five. And at this point, I would have been about diamond two. Um, we've got a Javan top. We've got an Ezu ID carry. We've got a Moomoo jungle, which is quite rare up here. Uh, we've got me being Ziggs mid, and we've got an Annie support, which obviously Annie right now is actually really, really good at support. The enemy team has a Janna support, Katarina mid, Teemo top lane, or other known as the Devil, or Satan, and they've got a Varus AD carry with a Sejuani jungle. Now, again, another rare jungler. So in this game, we've kind of got two junglers that aren't really used as much. So, yeah, kind of even, I'd say. Um, so the game right now, not much is going on. I think Jarvan is having quite a hard time in top lane from what I remember in this game. Obviously, Teemo does counter any really bruiser in the early game. Uh, but then as soon as that bruiser can get a little bit of tankiness and a bit of burst, yeah, Teemo can't put up with that. That's kind of why I think Teemo's not a great champion. Um, he's good if you simply want to, it's hard to say, but cheese your way up the ladder. He's good against just winning your lane in top lane but not doing much else. Um, other than that, I don't really rate him as a champion. Anyway, using your W off the platform is always a nice little boost to kind of get to lane quicker. Uh, it doesn't really add that much, but, you know, it's free mana because you're on the platform anyway, so why not? So I have opted to go for Sorcerer Boots early, purely because Katarina is fairly heavy on, you know, moving around, that type of thing. So having them movement speed boots, having that sorcerer or magic pen in there would be great against the Katarina early. Other things I could have done, I could have built my... Oh, wait. Oh, will I catch it? Bam. Yeah, I got it. Um, so I've got the Teemo kill there with my Mega Inferno bomb. It does quite a lot of damage. It's surprising how much it does. Obviously, it does more damage in the center of the bomb rather than the outside. But it still does a fair amount of damage, you know, anyway. Um, so right now that's making me 2-0-0. Uh, Javan unfortunately did not get an assist. It was too late for that. But me getting a kill is always nice. And I like having kills as you guys know. Um, but yeah this game is going fairly well for me right now. And I think it's going fairly well for bot lane as well. We've got Annie chasing away a, a Janna from lane. I think they were having a little a bit of a pink war in there. Uh, I've just seen Sejuani literally run through mid lane. Which I really never recommend doing as it makes it so obvious that you're going to do the blue buff. So I am looking to steal right here. But I don't have a ward on me which is unfortunate. So I'm going to try my best to kind of just see where we are with it. Use W and as soon as that happened she actually smited. So I was maybe uh, like a millisecond out from getting it. Uh, if she failed smited rather then I probably would have picked it up. But she didn't she got it. Um, which you know, great, well done to her I guess. Um, so just continue to farm up the mid lane when I can. Um, missed that one because I actually accidentally auto attacked and bot lane has to be relatively careful right here I've kind of pinged that Katarina is on her way and then they've got obviously three in vision right there And Mumu actually has found Katarina, but there's not much I can do. I can't really get that I don't have Mega Inferno bomb up yet. I nearly do but I don't yet um, So I think Amumu will just back off eventually. Yeah, he does So I'm gonna go for a bit of tower pressure Maybe just a couple of auto attacks or not uh, we are maybe looking for a dive bottom lane. Oh, Varus actually stayed, which was a mistake. He could have got out. So, unfortunate to this Varus that he's about to go down. And bam, kill for Annie. Annie getting kills as support is actually quite good because it allows her to build uh, a bit of AP, get a bit more damage in there. And that's kind of where Season 4, I think, is going to be quite weird for supports. So we're going to have to kind of see. Uh, a lot of the time over seasons, right, have promised, like, oh, junglers are going to have much more, a lot more gold, but they haven't. It's just the way it works out. So we're going to have to see how it is with support when it comes to actually live. Anyway, poking the Katarina a bit, using my all my abilities, another auto attack, and bam, she goes down. So that makes me on a killing spree. A lot of damage from Ziggs um, but just allows me to pick that up nice and easy. So anyway, Sejuani does move into lane ready to cover for the Cat Arena, which is fine. Um, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, my mana is running out even though I have blue because I think generally when you're on Ziggs, you should spam your abilities as much as you can when you know you're about to base because you may as well. Um, use all the your AP spells to get as much CS as possible. That's a, a little tip for you there. Now, a couple of tips I want to give on Ziggs while we're kind of in a little bit of a boring phase is ignite as soon as you come into lane. You can do this. I've seen it many times on different champions, etc. Uh, but if you're playing a champion that uses both abilities and auto attacks, 
Um, so AP abilities, you can literally, if you have the mastery point to use Ignite, get that five extra AP and AD early, it's actually very good. So you walk into lane at level one, you ignite your opponent, it gets them down about 200 odd health or so, 150, 200 health, and that gives you an extra five AD and five AP. One will help you auto attack better, uh, last hit better, etc. And then another thing will be, it makes your abilities hit a little bit more, maybe force them out of lane. Yes, you won't have the ignite to secure a kill, but it should make your early game a little bit easier if you are someone that may be struggling in that stage of the game just a little tip I thought I'd give now another thing you can do throughout this game or as Ziggs really is do the Michael Jordan and that is basically you throw your W down and then while you're in midair you can throw a bouncing bomb your Q out as a as you're in midair and I, I like doing these a lot of the time you do them for fun not actually expecting that you're gonna get somebody but when you do it is the happiest feeling of your life Anyway, I'm pressuring the mid lane again. Katarina is actually quite... She's playing the risky game, trying to pick up this CS. As every single time she comes in, I would probably try to harass her. Although we just have seen Sejuani around the dragon area. We may try to do the dragon relatively soon. They have got this warded, which we are unaware of. Um, so we do have to be a bit, little bit careful. Ezreal actually has called that he's going to base. So that makes us unable to do the dragon. So I return to the mid lane. Now my Bouncing Bomb, the Q, actually clears out the back range minions straight away. It's actually really good for clearing out minions. Um, but you do have to be careful with your mana. Having about a third mana, I'd say, at all time is okay. Having a third mana will be able to, I think, cast your full rotation once. Um, which isn't that bad. Anyway, the pink ward is on there. I've actually warded, or pink warded, our pink ward on dragon. So they, I don't, they, they're trying to get dragon control. But if they were to try and have a fight for it right now, we'd, I'd say, hands down, win the fight. So they have to be relatively careful. Now again, the Sejuani is doing a really weird play, just showing in mid lane. As a jungler, you are someone that wants to hide in the shadows, not be seen, be, make the enemy think, where's their jungler? They could be anywhere. This Sejuani is not playing that way. Anyway, bot lane, there's a bit of an excitement going down. I think our Mega Inferno Bomb may come down, so I'm, that's why I'm kind of showing the fight. Mega Inferno Bomb, bam, does get the, the damage on Janna. I think I'm going to jump over the wall here. Yep, jump over the wall and maybe try to pick up the kill for myself, but nope, too late. And this will give us pressure onto Dragon, I believe. So I don't know what Katarina was kind of doing here. She's just taking free damage, um, thinking that maybe she can kill me. But at the end of the day, she's level 9, I'm level 11. Um, so yeah, she's not really in a position to try and contest this dragon at all. Now here's, I remember this play by the Sejuani. I'm going to show the camera as of this so you can see both the dragon and the Sejuani's health. She is just getting out auto attacked to death by the Ezreal. She's trying to get in. I move her out the way. Ultimate comes down. She nearly actually did get it with Ultimate as Amumu didn't have a smite or he used it early. I don't really know. But that was really weird. Um, we, she gets killed basically for free. She tries to get the dragon but doesn't work. Ezreal actually has been jumped on by Katarina but I don't think he goes down. No, he does not. And then I'm personally securing the blue. Janna is maybe looking to steal it but she doesn't have any AP or anything. So I don't think she will be able to. She actually also uses ult. Which is really weird. Even if she got blue buff, she wouldn't be able to do that much with blue buff. Now that, now that she doesn't have ult, that gives my bot lane, the Annie and the Ezreal, a lot of opportunity to kill them. As, oh wait, I remember this. Yeah, forget that ever happened. <laughs> I f throw my W out to max range, then flash onto it, then use W. It gives you a lot of distance really quickly. But Katarina was way too far away and I don't know. I was kind of in a happy mood in this game and you'll see me do crazy stuff when I'm in a happy mood. So I might look to base relatively soon. Uh, I am, so I'm going to speed up the game. Some people have asked me to speed up the game when I am basing that type of thing. As I know, it is a little bit boring when I'm running back to lane. Uh, but I can still talk over, you know, etc. when I'm running back to lane. Um, so what does Ziggs want to do in the mid to late game? Ziggs is a champion that loves team fights. He's a champion that can zone people with his bombs, you know, his mines. Then Mega Inferno bomb into a whole team fight. He is a team fight god. Um, Ziggs is kind of, I'd say, hybrid in that fact. He's actually a Pope champion, if you can land your bouncing bombs quite often, getting a bit of damage onto the Katarina, as you can see. He's kind of a Pope champion and a teamfight champion, which is actually really rare. And Mumu is coming from the back, seeing what we can do. Really nice bandage toss there, and I think he actually may pick it up for himself. Yep, my uh, auto attack was coming in to finish it, but his uh, despair, I believe, actually picked it up. Um, so we're looking for the mid lane now. Sejuani is trying to cover. Unfortunately, I was a second or so too late to use my W. If I used my W at the right time, I would have knocked her back into 
us and then maybe would have got the kill. Teemo is on the wings. Uh, Mumu is actually looking for Teemo. Actually gets the bandage toss. My Mega Inferno Bomb comes out. He flashes but actually still hits him. And we're still looking for the kill. You can kind of see I'm in the area. Um, throw my W down looking for the kill. You said do the Michael Jordan. Uh, but again we are just continuing for the kill. Now Teemo has actually rushed Azonias which is quite odd. I pick up the kill for myself. Sejuani got ult comes down. I think this is our cue just to back off. Have to be fairly careful. Varizal has come down but then... It was quite close, and I think we'd actually back off. Katarina has jumped into everybody, but she's just got stunned instantly. I think that will make her go down. Yep, Gals is on a rampage. He's going to survive. That was very close, but he does manage to survive. And then me and Gals on, on vent are kind of going, let's do red. Let's do red. Both of us being extremely low health, we have to be relatively careful. I remember this point. I run away, and look at the minions that are attacking Gals. <laughs> that is relatively funny. I remember Gals kind of screaming like, no, you've killed me. Uh, but we're okay. And then we remember there's a Teemo in the game. And we just both base wherever we are so we don't hit a mushroom. It was relatively funny uh, on team communications. So I've gone back and bought. As you can see, I've actually opted for getting my Rabadon's Death Cat before my Sheen. Now this is something I'd recommend if you're very fed. As it does give you more AP. Uh, but if you're doing average, etc. Then Lich Bane as a first item is still a great item. It complements your passive very, very well. Um, and obviously Rabadons and Lich Bane when they're combined together are a great deadly force on Ziggs. Um, so kind of a full build on Ziggs uh, includes uh, Sorcerer Boots, obviously. Uh, Lich Bane, Rabadon's Death Cap. And then really total situational items. So then you're looking at an Abyssal if there's a fed AP. Or a Rylaze if there's a fed AP. Then a Zonyas if there's a very fed AD or an AD threat. Um, and that's pretty much your build. You can build all them items and it'll be a very nice big, big build. Getting a bit of damage. Uh, unfortunately, I think I might nearly go down here. Um, I might pick up the Sejuani. Uh, not yet. May look for the Teemo. Yeah, I think with the Teemo's dead because he kind of... The only problem with Zonyas, I find, he's dead from Ezra. The only problem with Zonyas, oh, Amumu is continuing for the kill, is that it freezes you in place. Now, yes, this is very good, but if you're just simply running away and the whole enemy team is there, you're basically dead anyway. Um, so, yeah. Now, I thought, I don't know really why, I thought Teemo might have been in this bush, but we just killed him. I kind of had a dirt moment. My team is looking for the tier 2 in mid lane, but they have to be fairly careful because they are, well, two of them are about half health. Java is full health, which is good. Uh, but they still have to be relatively careful. So I'm returning back into the fight. I don't think I even purchased anything then. But I just got my health etc back. Myself being 406 right now. I think the best KD in the game. Oh well Annie's actually 503. Ezra was 404. Uh, so our team is doing relatively well. If I move onto the gold tap. Which I have not done this game yet. We can see unfortunately actually Ezra has gone down. And they've gone down. So they actually opted for a bad team fight there. So I will actually just watch this team fight. Let's switch to A just to see how it's going. Um, use my W, seeing what I can do. I actually throw the bouncing bomb over the enemy team to get the Sejuani. And I think I may make my way out any second. They are continuing to chase, but I think I'm okay. Um, so yeah, move it back onto the gold screen. We can see that I am actually the highest gold in the game, being 7,400. The closest to me is the Ezreal at 6,700. Um, Karina did just jump on my face, but she doesn't pick anything up from that. So I'm okay for now. Janna is around the area as well as they are quite low in the mid lane. Varus actually has op like got back to full health simply because uh, that was a failed Mega Inferno Bomb. Maybe someone was basing there like the Katarina, but she went over to the right. Um, but yeah, there is a... I'm the most in the game. Most gold in the game. And I well, the CS has to be said is not good this game. There has been so many kills, especially on our team, and the enemy has been dead so much uh, that nobody really has farmed. The highest farm in the game is Ezreal on 100 and... or Teemo, actually, 149 at 19 and a half minutes, which is not good. Uh, you know, at this stage, you'd expect higher, but this is where you kind of can't put numbers on farm. People ask a question all the time saying, how much farm should I be at 20 minutes? It's properly, purely, etc. situational. It depends how many kills in the game. It depends how many objectives you're going for. It depends what you're doing. It's purely situational. Our team just picks up Dragon, which is a nice little bonus there. I'm currently 406, and now I'm the best KDA in the game uh, over the Annie that I have three more assists than. Obviously, do have a lot more gold uh, than the Annie because she is the support. 
Now our team is looking for a little team fight. I'm going to zoom out the camera so you can see a little bit, bit more. This is what LOL Replay can do. You can zoom out really, really far. Um, but I think they may just decide to back off. Now I am actually looking for top lane, seeing if I could kill the Varus that is just farming here. But I think, I don't really know how, but he kind of knew. He had a maybe a hunch type thing that he kind of just knew. I am looking for a bit of damage. Now I would have easily killed that guy if he stayed around farming, but he does decide to back off. So right now, because we're so strong, and Mumu actually did a bandage there when he didn't mean to, but because we're so strong, we can purely split. We've got myself top, we've got three mid that still have to be careful. We've got Ezreal bot lane. This is a great situation to be in, but these three mid just have to be careful of getting engaged on. Now, a couple things I could have done differently. Uh, I could have stayed top lane, gone for the tier two, or I actually am moving in with my team to see what we can do team fight wise, or you know, just looking for a kill here and there. Sejuani is in the area, but uh, kind of just pressure out of lane. Ezreal does go down, but this may open us maybe for the tier 2. I'm not really sure. Unfortunately, I don't think it does. Um, so I will just make my way out of there. Uh, Sejuani does use an ultimate to try and kill me. I'm going to use my mines and then try and just pick up the Sejuani kill nice and easy. There we go. And pick up the Teemo eventually, maybe. Uh, I don't think so. So unfortunately, don't get the Teemo. Uh, I do go down because Katarina kind of found me. Uh, and Jarvan may go down eventually. We'll have to kind of see. So this is kind of where, I wouldn't say the game is purely turning, but kind of where we're making sloppy mistakes. Uh, we should be closing out this game, maybe grouping as five, just winning the game, and we're not. So anyway, while the boring bit is uh, being done, while I'm dead, I'm going to just simply speed up the game. There's not much going on at all. People are basing, people are farming. Um, so we'll try and get to a more exciting period of the game. Uh, so I have just respawned. I have picked up my Lich Bane, which gives me a lot of extra damage. Um, really nice item on Ziggs. Compliments his passive. If you do not know his passive, it's basically a mini mid Lich Bane. Uh, every 12 seconds, Ziggs' ne next basic attack deals 123 damage, as well as an AP scaling. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the AP scaling is. It looks like a 0 0.5 or so, which is not bad. Anyway, team fight is happening. I literally get bursted down really, really quickly, but I do manage actually to get out, and then I find a team mushroom. The devil. I hate the devil. But anyway, we do kind of... I think it's, yeah, one for one in that team fight. So they actually probably come out on that at top because I'm a much more valuable target than the Katarina is. But that we still have pressure to try and go for the tier 3 base turret uh, of the enemy's mid lane. There's the Annie Tibbers. Good stun. Just gives him instant gives the team out instantly, even before he can Zonyas, which is great. And are they, these guys still have to be fairly careful. Although Varus is low mana, uh, they still have to be careful. And the Sejuani likes taking free damage for whatever reason. And bam, there's the follow-up. And they actually get all the kills. And there we go. There's a nice turnaround by my team. Now they're going to look for picking up the turret with Tibbers tanking. And that is probably the first inhib of the game. I'll just bring the camera over there. Katarina may be looking to try and get something here. But I don't really think she can at this point. She hasn't got her Zonyas um, at all. So she's not going to be able to immune herself and then get out. So she is really, really vulnerable to getting killed. Anyway, good old Ziggs is looking for some CS. Uh, as I am kind of starved for CS, I want more. So I'm going to pick up the race, a little bit extra, every little helps. And then I don't know really what I'm going to do. I'm maybe looking for mid lane because Ezreal, I think, has pinged for the bottom lane. He wants that, maybe. Um, but I think we are maybe looking for their blue or something. Jarvan is getting chased by Teemo, but I think he does get out. See, I run over to their blue just to see if it's up. It's not up yet, so but at least I'll have the kind of the X on the uh, the minimap when it does come up. I'll have that available to me uh, for the next time. Just avoid that shroom, which obviously I didn't actually have vision for, so that was quite lucky that I avoided that. Uh, but, you know, always nice to avoid that little bit of damage in the hindsight. Uh, doing a little bit of poke actually does actually hit both Sejuani and Varus, which is relatively good. And now we want to try and close out the game. Ezra is actually basing because I imagine he's got quite a lot of gold if we actually look. He's got, yeah, 3,000 gold on him, so he probably does want to spend that. He has actually overtaken me now in gold purely because of his farm. We are identical in 627, but he's got 40 more farm than me, and that is where the difference actually lies. So I'm doing Michael Jordan, looking for a little kill. I actually do get the damage, so yay. You always feel good when that happens. I get hit by Team Mushroom, and again, get hit by Team Mushroom. I hate Teemo. Um, so that has brought me down to about uh, two-fifths health or so, which is quite low. So I have to be fairly careful. I think I'm just going to go pick up Blue Base and then rejoin my team. So right now, things that we could be doing better. We're kind of finding ourselves basing at the different times where you kind of want to base at the same time and then you're grouped together, which we're not really doing at the moment. 
So I pick up the blue buff, and then I think I'm going to head over to top lane and look for the Teemo kill. So there comes Mega Inferno Bomb, and bye bye. So I pick up the Teemo nice and easy, and now they know Sejuani is top. I don't know why she's top. She should be helping to defend, but my team kind of has pressure. I would imagine that Amumu could potentially tower dive this with his ultimate, but we're going to have to kind of see. Uh, yep, bandage toss into the ultimate. Uh, Varus actually uses cleanse and ignite to get out. Here comes a little fight, and he goes down unfortunately, but they're continuing to go for the fight. There's the Randwins on both of them. Ezreal has returned, um, but uh, Sejuani just shows up. Let's just see. Uh, Ezreal does get that kill. Triple kill for Ezreal. Uh, I think he eventually will go down to Sejuani, but still, triple kill for Ezreal will give him even more gold eventually, and I am up now, so I can do a little bit of pressure wherever possible. Uh, most of the team is down, but I still have to be careful. So I'm going to go to the top lane, push the top lane really quickly. I want to get this tier 2. That is one one of my targets. Even though I'm not the top laner in this game, opening that turret up is quite nice. Opens the map up a little bit. So I'm with this quite big wave now, going to probably try and push in for this turret. And Teemo is, I can I have vision of Teemo, so I know he's not coming because he'd be the only really annoying person I'd have to deal with. Um, so I'm going to pick up this fairly quickly. Obviously with Short Fuse, my passive, and Lich Bane. Uh, Ziggs is obviously really, really good picking up turrets. And there we go. There is the turret straight away. Katarina, I think, is in the area. And I remember, this is quite funny. I do a Mega Inferno bomb, but she just simply wards. So I also ignite her. And I'm trying to basically just stall as much as I can. Just flash out the way. Here comes Katarina roll. And she doesn't go down. So close to being dead. She doesn't walk into a mine. She walks straight down. Uh, but that kind of leads my team maybe be able to do something. But unfortunately, they weren't in a massive position to do so. Ezra roll and swing didn't actually hit on my or, or didn't look like a hit but it did so that's quite nice but this will open this tier 2 turret down here so i got that turret it's not like i died for nothing katarina also did go down and we also get this turret down here so that's actually quite good it uh, has to be said quite good and uh, mumu stealing the enemy blue always nice to have blue on a mumu really i'd also always recommend giving blue buffs to your mid laner uh, most of the time if they're doing well um, but having a stealing the enemy blue buff as an Amumu late game is always a nice thing to do. Ezreal, well, my team is kind of focusing down the bot lane right now. I think they kind of want to get this in here. Um, mid is kind of getting crushed by super minions, so eventually someone will have to go back for the enemy team and kind of take care of them. Uh, but the, my team have to be really careful of being engaged on right now. If I was the enemy, I would run on these four instantly and look for a team fight. Uh, I am making my way in the mid lane, trying to get there as quick as possible because I know there is a team fight coming. Anyway, Sejuani kind of fluffs her ult, doesn't actually get a pure stun on anybody, but combined with the virus, does quite a lot of damage. But then Jarvan on top, uh, with Ezreal's damage going on, it's just too much damage. There's my Mega Inferno bomb, kit picking up the Teemo, and there is, I think, the Ace, and there we go. That is the Ace, and that might actually be the game. We'll have to see. Damn Team Roche rooms. So that does bring me quite low, but I think I'm okay to continue for a little bit anyway. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to move into the, their base, pick up the inhibitor while my team kind of crushes down this tower and that inhibitor. So maybe this isn't the end of the game. Maybe the end is coming soon. Um, throwing abilities every now and then just to try and get the Lich Bane proc just for a little bit of, you know, quicker tower pressure. Going to just kill these minions so it, maybe the super minion can do a little bit of turret damage. Oh, and actually it just goes down. And then I think we may just decide to back off in a second. They are coming up, so we have to be careful. Katarina is looking in the area. I jump over the wall, and he's stunned, and we might get away. But that might lead to the death of Galzuk. Sejuani does flash uh, for an Annie, which I could probably say is worth for us, because Sejuani kind of... Having flat flash in a team fight with Sejuani is actually pretty good. Anyway, Katarina is looking to chase. Um, I was throwing mines, etc. down just in case she was coming. Throwing a bouncing bomb every now and then back. And trying to run away as quick as possible. But I'm safe. So I'm going to speed up the game. Uh, until we're back into a team fight position. Uh, or that type of thing. Now build wise I've picked up myself a void staff. Which is obviously always really good. Because I don't really see anybody in the enemy team having a threat. So I just rather improve my own damage. And then after that I will build a Zonyas. Which will actually help against the Katarina as well. Because I can avoid all of her damage. Uh, if she doesn't get stunned. But most of the time she has altered in this, in this game. She actually has got stunned. Anyway, make uh, we actually find a Teemo, but we don't actually kill him. I did a very, very lucky W, and just the way that the, the LOS was positioned, it didn't actually show him in time. Now, Amumu actually kills Varus by himself. Now, if you're a team and the enemy jungler Amumu tank 
kills your AD carry, then you're probably a bit worried, to be honest. Now, while this is happening, they are all kind of collapsing on Amumu. We should be generally doing something else, and we're not. We should be probably pushing top lane, but they actually have just run over to help the Mumu. Um, so obviously hindsight is a wonderful thing, and there are many things that you can do better when you watch games over, etc. And definitely one of them things this game would have been going to push the top wave then instead of helping the Amumu. Now the Amumu re-engages, which is kind of his own mistake. Uh, we are looking for a team fight. Mega Inferno Bomb comes out with a bit of damage, but he does go down eventually. Katarina is doing a lot of damage right now to us, but I think, yep, I get her straight away and then moving in. Another kill for me, and that might be the game. Sejuani is still up, but there's not much to say about that. You know, she's not going to stop us getting the base. I do a failed jump because you kind of need vision in order to jump over these type of walls. Varus, for some reason, is dueling the Ezreal. I don't really know why, because Ezreal is a lot stronger than this Varus, and he goes down eventually. So I think that will be the game, guys. This was Zig's jungle, or Zig's jungle. This was Zig's mid lane. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys think the new mic is okay. Obviously, I, as said at the beginning of this video, I'll be re repositioning it and configuring it, etc., over the course of the next few videos to try and make it kind of perfect for you guys. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. So thanks for watching again guys. Now the question for this video is what are you most looking forward to in Season 4?